Are you having trouble picking the right hero for your draft? Do you keep wondering why the hero you drafted seemed good at first but was lackluster in the actual game? Don't worry, because we at Action are here to help you. This is our draft tier list. Before we get started, we would like to thank Swaggy G and Void Gimmick for helping our very own Aviera make the tier list. It's hard to get a decent sample size from a single person since one can only draft so many different heroes. First, let's break down the rankings. S is for heroes which are auto picks as soon as you see them, and generally are good on their own. Being able to pick two of them is amazing, and in some cases, having two of the same might push your deck over the top. A tier is for heroes that are really good but require some color synergies. Unlike S tier heroes, they require you to have decent main deck cards to unlock their full potential. B tier is for heroes that are good in general, but some parts of their kit may be lackluster. They could either have low stats, a weak passive, or a bad signature card. C tier is for heroes that you might be forced to pick if you need a hero of a certain color. This might be due to you drafting cards of a color that you don't already have a hero for. Lastly, we have F tier. This tier is for heroes that are pretty much unplayable and you should ignore them no matter what. If heroes from this pool are your last pick of the pack, then you are definitely better off picking the basic heroes. First on the green hero list, we have Abaddon. Abaddon has good stats for a green hero, but average compared to the others. His active ability is very mediocre. It heals him and gives him damage immunity for the round every two rounds. His signature card purges a unit and gives it plus two armor and retaliate for that round. Both of these abilities can only be impactful on the board at a very specific time in the game. Abaddon's passive is only useful when he's low on health and it's not on cooldown. Similarly, his signature is only useful when an allied unit can actually benefit from the purge and doesn't die instantly that round. Therefore, Abaddon belongs in the C tier. Next up, we have Chen. While having the same stats as Abaddon, his active is much better. Even though it has a cooldown of 4, it has the same effect as Helm of the Dominator, which costs 19 gold to buy. You gain control of an enemy creep. So steal that Thunderhide pack or Alpha and destroy your opponent's tower with their own creeps. Chen's signature card might be expensive, but it is very strong. Damage immunity plus a full heal to all your allies will put you so far ahead on the board that you won't need to care about the amount of mana spent to do it. This puts Chen in the A tier. Darkseer has similar stats like the hero's previous. His passive is decent and allows you to move another ally to a different lane. Mobility is pretty helpful in drafts, but not always necessary, since many items and consumables can achieve the same if necessary. Darkseer's signature card is pretty average too, and provides a marginal board impact at an unexciting cost. This is why Darkseer belongs in the B tier. Next we have Drow Ranger. Drow Ranger may be slightly weaker in stats compared to the previous green heroes, but her passive more than makes up for it. It might even be the strongest passive in the game. Plus one attack to all allies across all lanes feels broken, wouldn't you agree? Additionally, her signature card, Gust, AoE silences enemy heroes in her lane for 4 mana. Drow is the ultimate tempo hero and belongs in the S tier. Choose her whenever you get the chance. Enchantress, another hero with regular stats compared to the other heroes. Her passive is quite strong, providing her and her allied neighbors with plus 2 regeneration. Her signature card is an improvement that gives plus 1 armor buff to all allies in that lane for 5 mana. This theme of providing strong defensive stats means that units in her lane can play the attrition game pretty well, and she fits well with other buff cards like Arm the Rebellion and Remusk Blessing. This puts her in the A tier. Farvon the Dreamer. This basic green hero's passive that gives plus one armor to neighbors is pretty useful in the early game. However, this is overshadowed by his signature card, which is pretty weak. A 0-6 creep for four mana that gives plus one armor to neighbors just doesn't cut it. This is why we put Farvon in the C tier. Lycan has a passive that gives plus two attack to allied neighbors, and it's really useful, allowing your melee creeps to trade two for one against your opponents. His signature card, Savage Wolf, is also excellent if left unchecked, since it repeatedly buffs itself after every combat phase. A strong hero like Lycan deserves his place in the A tier. Next, we have Magnus. Magnus is unique in that he is the only green hero that has armor and no ability. A red hero in disguise, perhaps? Magnus' signature modifies a unit with plus 3 attack and plus 3 cleave for 4 mana, which can be likened to an item, but costing mana instead of gold. Magnus isn't too special on his own and will need some support to be useful. We put him in the B tier. Omni Knight's stats are much stronger than all the other green heroes on top of a strong active ability. Purification allows you to heal a unit for 3 health every 2 rounds keeping the tempo up in his lane at the cost of a relatively short cooldown. His signature card gives a permanent buff to a green hero that gives allies plus two regeneration in that lane. Very handy, because unlike improvements, this buff moves to whichever lane the hero is in. Excelling in all categories puts Omni Knight in the S tier. 
Having stats that are below the average for a green hero, Rix has a signature card that silences a unit for a round. This card is significantly weaker than Gust, but it can target creeps, which might have its uses. Rix's passive, which gives him rapid deployment, can be comboed with certain cards, but it will take significant effort to be useful. Therefore, Rix belongs in the C tier. Tree Protector's passive gives its neighbors plus two armor, twice what Farvon provides. This is quite a strong passive and will help you win many fights in his lane. In addition, his signature card, Roseleaf Druid, a 4 mana 2 6 creep that gives your tower plus 1 mana, has its uses in ramp strategies but ultimately falls flat. Tree Protector is good, but does not excel. This is why we put him in the B tier. Finally, Viper. Viper's passive modifies a unit with minus 1 attack if the unit dealt battle damage to him. Not the worst passive, but this will not have much immediate impact on the board state. Similarly, his signature card also does not provide immediate impact, dealing two piercing damage to a unit before every action phase until it dies. An interesting ability, but one that can be avoided by simply town portal scrolling the unit out or purging it. They say good things come to those who wait, but this does not apply to Viper who is too slow, earning his spot in the C tier. That's all for our Green Hero Draft tier list. Be sure to check out our other tier list videos for the rest of the colors. I hope you guys have a better experience drafting now that you have watched this video. If you ever need to reference back to the tier list for all the colors, we have compiled a full tier list on our website for your convenience. Link is in the description below. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.